I have a video that I need to make because my mother, who was obviously under strong brain control technology or was her clone, called me up about five or six times today. She left three long messages on my phone that took up about a half an hour to listen to. I'm not going to tell you everything she said, but she's claiming that Brent Spiner, Judge Terrance Jenkins, Harvard, Harvard Law School graduate, Gerard Butler, Matthew McConaughey, Jesus, Hugh Jackman, that they're all scam, that I'm not listening to the real people. And um, she went on and on telling me how stupid I was and how selfish I was because I was jeopardizing the family and the reputation that I would never ever get a job, that any job I get that I would be fired because nobody would hire me once they figured out how crazy I was because of my website and my YouTube channel and my videos. She said she was very concerned and she's going to go to the police and she's going to try to get lawyers to try to uh, go after her. Brent, Terrance, and Gerard. Well, actually, she said they were all fakes. She said I was stupid, that they're just playing games with me, that they uh, send these love messages to all sorts of stupid women, and that I'm just a sucker, and that I'm so highly intelligent that I should know better than to believe all this stuff. And she, uh, she was saying that shows that I'm crazy because I'm so smart that I should not fall for any all this stuff. Um, I am really angry over this call that I got from my mother. First of all, she needs to mind her own business. Uh, the, I make this website and I did not make it with the intent to become famous but to defend my men. First of all, I am 100% convinced that I am talking to the real Brent Spiner because in the letters that he sends to me, I read uh, the correspondence of a man of highest intelligence, maturity, and vastness. She claims that these are teenagers playing games with me on the phone. I have listened to Terrance Jenkins' voice on Skype, and I can assure you this is not the voice of a teenager. It sounds like the voice of a middle-aged man, and I actually heard the uh, whole trial proceedings that when I was there at the um, Quebec trial with... Uh, with me and Lori McBride and Brent Spiner, and I am convinced that was a real trial. He is no teenager, so she's full of baloney about this. I got a question. You know, I just cannot believe the extent to which the Jesuits are going to try to discredit me. They have to discredit me. Let me tell you why. I want to know why we're not hearing about this. This is Jack Chick's book, Smoke Screens, okay? I highly recommend you look at this book. If anything, just take a look at some of these pictures. There's Adolf Hitler. Uh, right next to him is Mussolini. These were all devout Roman Catholics. Their goal was to help the Pope, Pope Pius XII, to set up a Roman Catholic dictatorship over the whole earth. There's uh, Franco. Okay. Right over here is a picture of a Franciscan monk. Can you see that? That's a Roman Catholic Franciscan monk. His job during World War II was to execute those who would not convert. He was a Eustachi. His name was Stain Kukavika. I don't know how you pronounce it. A Franciscan monk um, in the uniform of the Eustachi. He, the Eustachis were killers. If you go to my website at gabrielchana.com and you click on a link, I've got a a Vimeo video that just shows actual footage of what the Jesuit, what the Roman Catholic Church did during World War II to the Serbians and how they executed them in, in concentration camps and tortured them, even causing some of them, like they would, a whole, Jack Chick talks about it in his book, how a whole family starved and that they, the Roman Catholic Eustachi didn't feed them anything for a week. Then after a week, they brought in a big-sized roast and said, here's your dinner. Well, they were so famished, they ate the whole roast. And then when they were done, the Eustachi told them that they had just eaten the body of their father. Now, why are we not hearing about this? Now, this is what the Jesuits want to do to the United States. And my mother accuses me of being selfish because I'm willing to risk my life and my reputation and have lost a job over this because I have the courage to try to stop them from taking over the United States. 
I want to thank you, Fox News, for establishing a news channel for me. That took a lot of courage, and God will honor you for this. I want to show you some more pictures. Take a look at this. This is from Jack Chick's book. Why are we not hearing about this? These are all Roman Catholics during World War II. The bishops and archbishops of Croatia gave full support to the Eustachi. Here the Croatian bishops and archbishops are seen pictured with Ante Pavlovich during one of their frequent conferences with him. And I'm going to show you some of the stuff they did during World War II. These were nuns who cooperated in World War II with the Eustachi killer squads. They were decorated for the heroic Eustachi deeds. Take a look at this right here. Here's some more pictures. This is World War II. You may say, that's World War II. They would do it all over again. They put a new cocky on Canada, which Fox News in Canada covered. Okay? Why are we not hearing about this, mother? Huh? You're so concerned about your family's reputation, about the fact that I can't get a job. I'm trying to save this country from people like this. Okay? And you say I'm selfish? Would you like it, Mother, if the, you, if the Roman Catholic Church did this to your family? Take a look at that picture, Mother. And then you come and call me on the phone and tell me I'm selfish. You see what they're doing? They're about to chop off somebody's head because this person won't convert to Roman Catholicism. They will do this all over again. They executed this person. Take a look at this. Come here. Okay, Mother, look at these pictures. And then you call me on the phone and tell me I'm selfish. You're the one who's selfish. Take a look at this. This is that they're getting ready to chop off somebody's head. You know why they're doing this? Because the Roman Catholic Church feels they have the perfect right to kill anybody who won't convert to their religion. And I'm trying to stop them from taking over the United States and setting up concentration camps like they did in Nazi Germany. And I happen to have Jewish ancestry, and my great uncle was Howard Hughes. And he had Jewish ancestry. He came from an Orthodox Jewish family. This has all been covered up by the Jesuits. And I believe they murdered Howard Hughes. And they somehow poisoned him. And they induced insanity in him. Okay, I'm going to show you some more pictures here. Take a look at this. This is a child. This is a child that the Jesuits and the Roman Catholic Church murdered in World War II. I'll read what it says here. A priest named Ivan Raguz repeatedly urged the killing of all Serbs, including children, so that not even the seeds of the beasts are left. This is what I'm trying to stop, Mother. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. That is somebody's head that got decapitated. These are Roman Catholic monks who did this. And they want to do this here in the United States. You're the one who's selfish, Mother. I have the courage to put my reputation and all that on the line to expose this and stop this from happening in the United States. I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear about selfish, okay? I have the courage to, I have, I have paid a price for my stand against the Roman Catholic Church. He's got, take a look at this picture again, okay, Mother? Take a look. So you approve of this organization? Do you realize that if you go to the police and you go to the lawyers and you try to cut off my communication with Brent Spiner, Terence Jenkins, Gerard Butler, Hugh Jap, and Vladimir Putin, you will be cutting off the people who are saving my life and your life and this country. The Jesuits are trying to isolate me from my support so they can destroy me. And you are cooperating with them. You are a killer because you're helping out killers. And you're the one who's selfish. I don't want to hear it, mother. Don't you talk to me about who's selfish. You're cooperating with this. Look what they did to these children. This is a concentration camp, a Roman Catholic concentration camp. I don't want to hear it, mother. I'm assuming that's my mother. It could be her clone. You are a killer. You're cooperating with these people. These are Roman Catholics. I'm going to show you another picture here. You see, oh, those are Roman Catholics. Yes, they are. Let me show you a picture here. Take a look at this picture. 
This is a picture of Adolf Hitler shaking hands with a Roman Catholic leader. Take a look at that picture. Adolf Hitler. That's a Roman Catholic leader. Explain that one to me, mother. This is what I'm trying to stop in this country. I don't want to hear it. Don't you call me selfish. I have courage. And I'm willing to give my life to make sure that this doesn't happen in the United States. Okay, mother? Explain this. Okay? I'm really angry. Really, really angry at you. Don't you call the police and cut off my support with Brent Spiner. Don't you go to the lawyers. Brent, I'm, an, I'm telling you, if this mother goes to the police and to the lawyers, I want you to arrest her as a Jesuit conspirator if she's, not, if she's the clone. If she is a, a mind control victim, we need to get her under control because she's very dangerous right now. Because she is cooperating with these people. Because if she cuts off my, if she can, if she cuts off my communication with you, she's going to isolate me from the only people who are keeping me alive right now. And if she succeeds in doing that, you know what's going to happen next? The Jesuits are going to, once they isolate me from my supports, they're going to go in and make the kill. We are not going to let her do this. Okay, I am really angry at you. How dare you cooperate with these people? You are an evil woman. Okay, I'm going to continue here. Brett Spiner sent me a $100 gas card, okay? And I'm not going to mention it to you because I don't want to talk about um, the place where I worked at before, okay? I would like to say this about Walmart. The eight years that I worked there was a very enjoyable experience, and I have no hard feelings against Walmart. The only reason that I'm not there now is I believe the Lord just wants me to move on, and he has other plans for my life. I have no hard feelings against Walmart. I thought the people were very nice to me when I was there. But for some reason, the Lord just wants me to move on. It looks like the Jesuits did get the CEO. But I would like to say that the people I worked with were a great group. And I have nothing but the best respect for them. And I have no hard feelings towards Walmart. I'm just going to move on in my life. And wherever the Lord wants me next, that's where I'll be. Right now, I feel the Lord wants me to make this video. Um... You know, Brent Spiner was very generous when I, um, when I lost my job with Walmart. He spent like five or six hours helping me fill out unemployment. He, he contacted me right away and gave me immediate support. He's, he just has been so generous with his time with me. He's saying, well, that wasn't Brent Spiner. Well, if it was a, um, a fake, he certainly is a very caring and generous fake with, it, with his time. And, you know, he could, Brent Spiner could easily have destroyed me, me by now because I've allowed him to have access to all sorts of private stuff that, that if he was a bad person, he could have destroyed me by now. He, he could have just totally destroyed me. And he hasn't done that. That's because it's the real Brent Spiner and he is a good person. Okay? Also, this Jesus that I've been communicating with through Brent Spiner is the real Jesus Christ. I can tell. Because I've read the Bible from cover to cover over a hundred times. And I know the character of Jesus Christ. And this Jesus that I've spoken with on Skype has got brilliant Bible knowledge. And he's able to answer every single Bible question I ask him. And some of my questions are really deep. Which only Jesus himself would know the answer to. So I know I have been speaking with the real Jesus Christ through Brent Spiner. It's not a fake Jesus. I know the Bible well. I've hit him with some pretty deep theological questions, and he's come back. For instance, I asked him, is it true during the tribulation that, um, that the plan of salvation is going to change and that you'll have to keep the Ten Commandments and the Jewish law? And he said, that is correct. And from my Bible readings, that makes sense. But another area where I thought I was right is I thought that the plan of salvation for the millennial reign would be the Sermon on the Mount, because that's something I heard from Dr. Peter Ruckman. And Jesus said, no. No, that is not correct. He said the Sermon on the Mount was meant to show people how sinful they are so that they would come to him. And I went back and reread the Sermon on the Mount after Jesus told me that from our Skype conversation. And I realized that, you know, what he said makes perfect sense. It's in line with the scripture. So nothing that this Jesus says contradicts scripture or the character of God. Even his, um, the way he talks using regular street language with us. 
you got to understand the King James Bible was written in 1611, but um, Jesus, it makes sense that Jesus would want to use street language or I mean, it's not gutter language. He just, he just talks in everyday language because he's not stupid. He realizes that's how he can communicate more effectively with people. That doesn't mean he's not deity. And when he was here on earth, I believe, with his disciples, I believe he used the common language of the people. But, you know, over time, the English language has evolved, and so no, they, uh, they don't speak like they did back in 1611. But that, that sounds like Jesus. Besides, if the inspired word of God is in English, Jesus isn't stupid. He's going to speak in language that people understand. So that, that sounds like him. Uh, I'm going to read Matthew 10, 34 through 38. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. My mother was saying that I'm so selfish because I need to put my family first. I just read you what the Bible says. I'm not trying to deliberately harm my family. But if I have to choose between following Jesus Christ or honoring Jesus Christ and honoring my family, I choose honoring Jesus Christ. The Bible says, when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. That's in the Psalms. You know, the Jesuits are using my craziness as a distraction. Why are we not hearing about this stuff in here? Hmm? That's the issue. Have you noticed how the Jesuits are cleverly staying away from that stuff? Because it's true. And they, they're trying to, they have to, they're focusing on how crazy I am, using sensationalism to distract away from this. Because they don't want people to know what's in this book. I highly recommend everybody get smoke screens by Jack Chick. And look at those pictures, man. That, that's what I'm trying to prevent. The real issue is this, folks. It's not the whether I'm crazy or not. It's this. This is what the Jesuits don't want you to know. Okay? They're trying to distract by focusing on my craziness so people won't deal with this. Okay? This is the issue, folks. If the Jesuits succeed in isolating me from Brent Spiner and Vladimir Putin, we're going to have to deal with that. Your family. Hey, mother. We're not even going to have to worry about me getting a job if I end up in a concentration camp, will we? Huh? Is that what you want? You evil woman. Is that what you want? You coward. You wicked coward. You should be standing with me on this. All you can do is selfishly think about your own safety and personal comfort when our nation's about to get taken over by these people. Huh? I have the courage to try to stop this. We don't, we're, we're not going to have to worry about whether I get a job if we're all dead or we're all suffering in a concentration camp. And that's what they're trying to do. Okay, that's the real issue. I don't want to hear it. all this other stuff about how crazy I am and whether I'm going to get a job that's all poppycock.